Hey, how's everyone doing today? Man, October 6th. How's your week going? I know around here I've started to notice a little bit of the leaves changing, and certainly the days are getting shorter. Uh, hopefully you've noticed some of that stuff where you're at. If you haven't, hey, take some time this week uh, to see God in nature. Uh, you're going to be encouraged when you take a moment to see uh, God's artistry in, in his creation. So we started a conversation last week uh, about an illness each of us have. And we determined that we are terminal, didn't we? There is a 100% chance that each one of us will die. And the challenge that I'm proposing in this idea is to live with the end in mind. So I gave us this scenario uh, last week. What would your life look like if you only had 60 days to live? What changes would you make? What relationships come to mind? How would today's problems and tomorrow's worries look different with 60 days to live. It's all about eternal perspective. That's what we're trying to exercise in this conversation that we're having. It's, it's eternal perspective, something that I think is hard for us to hold on to in this world. So I told you that last week that I wanted to build some foundations into this idea of eternal perspective. Let's look at a scripture here for a moment that's going to help us do just that today. I want us to go to Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. And this is what Paul says there. This is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up. Our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. So got this big idea for us today. We're building some foundations into eternal perspective, into the terminal illness that you and I have. Living with the end in mind means that you and I will live with a sense of urgency. That's the big idea for today's discussion, living with a sense of urgency. So Paul, in this letter to the church at Rome, Rome says this, another reason for living in the right way is that you have to know, you must know how late it is, that time is indeed running out. Do we live on earth like we will live forever on earth? Or do we live like time is running out? Quite a question, isn't it? You see, our answer to that question changes everything. And I would submit to you, and I mentioned this last week, but I would submit to you that the COVID pandemic has shown that most of us are committed to living like life on this earth will not end. Hmm. Go figure. That's a hard one, isn't it? What does, if that's the case, what does that live forever here perspective do to us? Well, for one thing, it gives us a someday sickness. Have you heard of someday sickness? Because we live like we will live forever on earth, we have a tendency to go into someday mode. Someday I will take that awesome trip. Someday I will visit those family members. Someday I will get things right with my parents. Someday I will have more time for my kids. Someday I will talk to my friend about Jesus. Let me ask you this, what's your someday? How would embracing your terminal condition change it? 
Because here's the deal. Someday sickness robs us of today and fills our lives with regret. You know, someday and uh, procrastination walk really well together. I read a story uh, quite a few years ago uh, about a guy that returns to his house where he grew up. And he had been away for something like 20 years. And he goes into the house, he goes up into the attic and he finds an old jacket. And uh, it didn't make the move with him when he left the home 20 years ago. And uh, so he puts on this jacket and he puts his hands in the pockets and he pulls out a receipt for a pair of shoes he had taken in to be repaired 20 years ago and forgot to pick them up. So on a whim, he, he goes to where this shoe repair shop used to be in his old neighborhood and it just happened it was still there. And in fact, the same guy is still working behind the counter that worked there 20 years ago. So this man reaches back into his jacket. He pulls out this receipt that's 20 years old and hands it to the guy uh, behind the counter. And the man goes back to the work area and he returns to the counter and he says to the guy with this jacket, your shoes will be ready on Friday. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's a little bit of procrastination at work. That's some of the someday sickness uh, on display for you and for me. We need to live with a sense of urgency to experience the abundant life, don't we? We really do. We need to have some sense of urgency to experience the abundance that God has designed for our lives. The irony that I'm seeing in this season that has been filled with lots of sickness, with lots of death, lots of, um, of um, warnings of, of how short life is. What, what I, the irony in all of this is that a lot of us are less motivated to live with urgency than we've been in a long time. So we have to take back, we have to take back those thoughts and those feelings that have us stuck and realize with a sense of urgency that the clock is ticking on our lives here on earth. Now, let me say this as well. This is really important. Living with urgency does not mean living frantically. Those are two different things. Frantic and urgent are not the same thing. Frantic living is rushed living, living without purpose, living without direction that's usually full of stress and anxiety. On the other hand, to live with a sense of urgency means that we are living with an awareness that you and I are not promised someday. We live alert to this day and take advantage of the opportunities given to us this day. Don't let someday and what ifs define your life. Proca procrastination and worry will keep you from enjoying this day. It's time to seize the gift of today because tomorrow on this earth might not come. The only day you and I can really do anything about is today. So I wanna leave you with this verse, Psalm 118, 24. It's a familiar one to many of us. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That verse is my challenge to you today. That verse is my challenge to you the rest of this week. Rejoice and be glad in this moment because that'll get you to the abundant life. And I said this a week ago, and, and maybe, maybe it can be a motto for uh, this study over the next few weeks. Let your ending inspire a new beginning. Think about that. Let your ending on this earth inspire a new beginning today, a new perspective. Every day's a gift. Seize it.
take advantage of it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. No regrets. Find his abundance. Find his purpose for you this week as you live in this day. We're going to continue to uh, build on um, this eternal perspective next time. But the key idea today is live with a sense of urgency. And uh, as we build on this foundation, we'll then shift into maybe some uh, practical examples of what uh, living in this moment looks like. Let's pray together. We'll wrap it up. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the moment that we have to uh, share with one another, to spend a little bit of time together today, to uh, look at your word, to consider the challenge and the encouragement that you have for each of our lives. May we see with eternal perspective. May we understand that someday and worry uh, can get in the way of what you have for us this very day. Help us to live in the abundance and fullness of this moment. Help us to realize that this is indeed the day that you have made, and we will choose to rejoice and be glad in it. You've given us this moment. We're not promised tomorrow on earth. Help us to take advantage of this moment. Help us to live with that sense of urgency that sees you at work, that sees you at work in this day. Thank you, God, for loving us in this moment. Thank you for loving us forever. And thank you for giving us what we need in this moment. You are God. You are good. You are good to us. You are good for us. We thank you for who you are and your blessings in our lives. Continue to be with each and every one of us, Lord. We lift one another up today. We pray that your power, that your encouragement, that your peace, your purpose would flow over each and every one of us. Help us to take a moment in this day to praise you and to thank you and to realize that you are always working behind the scenes in the stories of our lives. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hey, it's good being with you today. Uh, join us again next week, next Wednesday, 11 a.m., midweek motivation, and uh, we'll continue the conversation. Blessings. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. We'll see you again real soon.